Hey everyone, welcome to Bobini Creates. My name is Jeannie and welcome to Whip Day. <laughs> and what this is, you know, we've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we have Whip Day, um, which is a new series I'm going to start. So welcome. <laughs> Today I'm working in Small Victories by Johanna Basford and I'm bringing you along to help me fix a background that I kind of messed up. So let's get started. So I'm hoping that this is going to turn into one of those happy accidents, but right now I'm just in sort of the beginning stages of that. So I was really happy with the way my page had turned out, you know, just this part of it. And that was with um, ink tents and then just a tiny bit of pencil for shading and then tiny little bit of um, glitter gel pen in some of the, the little dot areas. So I was just kind of going about my merry way as I do and working on the background and I just wasn't liking it. It just was not coming out. So um, I ended up, and I know this is a lot, <laughs> I ended up painting it with the color shifting paint. And, you know, I I knew that I had wanted a blue to kind of bring out the bird. So this is this is where we are so far. So it was... Actually, it was a metallic, excuse me, it wasn't color shifting. So it was a metallic folk art. Um, this is the blue sapphire. I think it's a really pretty color. I think it goes with that really well. And I decided that there's a couple things I want to do. I want to bring some of that metallic into the bird. And I had just started that here and I thought, you know, let's, let's go ahead and um, bring you along with me. <laughs> but I think if I can bring in some of the metallic here um onto the bird and brighten him up a little bit because I feel like he really pales in comparison to the background. We'll do that and then um, I think what I'll do is then I'll try to go back and tone down the background. So step one is adding a little bit of something to the bird and I am gonna rotate and I'm sorry for that but I'm not that good at um, doing things when it's straight upright. I, it's just not really something I'm very good at. So so I'm just adding a little bit. Uh, I, it's a little bit of a richer color, you know. It's a, excuse me, it's the same color, I guess, but it's just a little, a little deeper. I don't know what the terminology is for that, but, and also the shine, bringing the shine in. So that is one thing, and Know how much of that I want to do. Let's start with let's less is more here for a moment. And then we'll bring it down here. Yeah, let me dot that off so I don't end up with too much on the paintbrush. I really enjoy these acrylic paints. But, I mean, I can see where, like in this case, it is overwhelming, and that's why I'm kind of trying to make everything fit. But, it, you know, it served its purpose here. It wasn't the background that I had initially started, wanted to start out with. I wanted to start out with a, well, I, what I wanted to do was an intense background with, you know, the same colors that were in here, just sort of faded out. And it just wasn't anything that I was in love with. So sometimes you need to just, or sometimes I need to just fix something. And that's what I'm doing here. And it's interesting sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes when I fix things up, it ends up being a lot better than uh, what I had envisioned to begin with. And you just don't know how that's going to, pan out <laughs> but see I'm already liking that better I mean it's already brightening him a bit so so far so good but um, I'm, I'm really hoping that I can fix this up and that happens in coloring it just does it happens in different artwork um, you know call it working through the uglies or fixing a mistake, you know, it, it happens. And um, sometimes in fixing those mistakes, 
at least for me, you know, I it helps me to maybe learn something new, try something new. Um, and that's okay too, you know. So, so far I'm liking this a lot. And it's funny because now that I see it, probably should have had this all along because it really kind of adds a lot, I feel like. So, so far I feel like this is a good move. All right. I really had fun playing with these, um, you know, I've always liked acrylic, you know, in the backgrounds and whatnot, but I've really enjoyed these metallics and color shifting paints, especially on coloring pages. So, um, I think this is going to work out kind of well. And like I said, I'll tone down the background, but that's the next step. So, so far I'm liking that. Um, I think I'm going to continue adding a little bit more though. It's interesting. I, the other day I was coloring in a Lulu Mayo book. It was um, cute animals here. Let me clip this real quick um, like that. Okay. I was coloring in cute animals and I don't know that the the page was lovebirds. I don't I don't really know my my birds so to speak, but it made me want to look up lovebirds. So I did, and in doing that, I found out that there was something called the Phoenix lovebirds, and I had never heard of that. Now, when I mentioned it to my husband, he he did he was aware of them, but I guess what it is is. In Phoenix, Arizona, there's a population of lovebirds that um, that live there, kind of around uh, ASU, Arizona State University, I think. And um, they've been around since, from what I was reading again, since the 80s. And I think, if from what I'm understanding reading, is that you know, they were a, a pet to begin with, or they might have um, escaped from a breeder. I, I don't know, but they ended up um, breeding in, in the wild, and now they say that there's about, oh, I don't know, um, 2,000, I think I maybe heard of, as of a couple years ago, and I don't know. I just thought that was really kind of cool. And so I, it led me to, to looking at it more and more, and I found all sorts of pictures and videos of these lovebirds. So some of the pictures have um, are of the lovebirds in making little homes in the saguaro cactus plants. They have a little little holes in them that other birds maybe had used for homes. And they've taken over some of those. And so that's, you know, one place that they live. I saw other places where they made um, their their nests in saguaro, uh, not saguaro, in palm trees, that type of thing. And yeah, so anyway, they're all over. And so I ran into some videos where people were filming in their backyard, just like their regular bird feeders. And there's just like flocks of these things everywhere. So kind of a, it's a thing apparently. Um, and I thought it was kind of fascinating. So yeah, lots and lots of, uh, lots of really cool photos, you know? So, um, let's see here. I'm about done here. I think, you know what? I think I maybe want to add a little bit more here. But um, the other interesting thing, I had mentioned that they're around, you know, the ASU campus. And I guess what it is, is they, where where they're from, it's the climate is warm. So, you know, Phoenix works okay for that. But when it gets too warm, when it gets above 100, it's a stressor for them. So they uh, flock to or congregate in along the 
vents of air conditioning at the U of A campus. And um, so apparently it's a little cooler there and that they've made do, but they, they seem to be thriving. Um, I think that thinking, you know, obviously when uh, animals and birds come to an area that they aren't, you know, uh, it's not their habitat, the, all different things can happen. And, you know, there's obviously the concern that maybe they can take resources away, away from locals, local habitat. But I think in this case, they said it, there's, they're kind of the, the underdog. So they, I think they feel like there's not a, a big danger of that. But anyway, the whole thing was rather fascinating and they sure are beautiful. And, um, yeah, so that was interesting. I just this total rabbit hole that I went down. And you know what? I'm going to come in here a little bit. Um, sometimes when you move the metallic paint or the color shifting if you, uh, that you're working on, um, you can see areas that need a little bit of help. And that's what just happened when I thought I was done and I moved it and I could see where this could benefit from a little bit more paint. Anyway, um, yeah, just kind of interesting, but I do that. I, I, I look up things and then it takes me down the rabbit hole. <laughs> and then before you know it, you know more about the lovebirds of Phoenix than you probably needed to know, you know? Okay, so that's good. Um, let's see here. I could add a little bit on the tip tops of these flowers. So I think I might do that. Yeah, just a little bit. I'm not trying to overwhelm the, the picture, but I just want everything to sort of come together. So it sure seems like there's a lot of people working in this book. Um, this is actually the very first page that I've worked on and um, coming close to completing. And thankfully, I, I knew I needed to crack it open, but I just, you know, there's, as we say, there's too many pages, <laughs> too many books, too many pages you want to color and, you know, too little time type of thing. And so my friend Davisa from DJ's Colorful Escape has been doing some beautiful pictures in her book. And she graciously offered to do a buddy color. So this is what we chose. I've seen her picture. It's gorgeous. So um, this was good because it got, got my feet wet in, you know, breaking into this book. And sometimes that's all it takes is just, you know opening a book, making it go from a new book to a not a new book, and it, making it yours, adding a little bit of color on the page, um, making it not quite so precious, maybe, <laughs> is the way it works for me. I feel like it's so pristine when I first get a book, and so it takes me a minute to want to, I, I want to color in it, I really do, but... Um, you know, I, I, you don't want to ruin it or whatever it is. I think I'm going to add a little bit here. Now I'm just having fun for sure. <laughs> um, I'm just going to put just enough to add a little bit of shine, I think. It's already, you know, shaded in this area, so I don't feel like I need a bunch, but just a little bit to tie everything together. There we go. And see, I'm working myself into a corner because I've painted that. I'm painting this, and then when I if when I want to work on this, I'm going to have to be careful not to dip my hand in wet paint. So I didn't think that went out too well. I guess that's okay though. <laughs> I like it. I think this is this is working. And I didn't know that I needed a little bit of depth to to this part of my page, but since I was kind of forced into it with 
the background that I had created. Um, now I see that it's really benefiting from the uh, deeper shade of blue here in various places. Let's see. But I've seen some beautiful pages completed in this book, and it it really is kind of a fun book because you you can complete I don't know like small um, small little pages, small little pieces, and um, you know like you could color one of those, or you could color the whole page and still feel like you've accomplished something. Yes, I know I made some smudges here, but you know what? Hey, I'll I'll fix that and maybe you'll come along <laughs> for that little journey too. I'm not I'm not trying to worry about it. I'm just really not. It happens sometimes when you're even just the most careful, it happens. And there's usually a way to fix it just like there is on the, the page I'm working on. Okay, um, I'm going to say pardon me while I rotate again because I do want to work on those, but I do not want to get paint on my hand and I do not want to cause any more smudging. So here we go. So I hope you guys had a good Valentine's Day. I've been throughout the month working on different pages like the, the one I just told you about, the Lovebird Not Lovebird <laughs> page um, and some others that I kind of thought were fitting for Valentine's. My husband cracked me up because he, uh, <laughs> this was so funny, we ended up having to work on some retirement stuff and it just worked out that it that was a good day for us to work on it and he was so funny because you know we're we're looking at um you know uh, yeah anyway without getting into it yeah that's what we were working on it and my husband said um you know babe I've still got it I I can on Valentine's Day I can talk about money and death <laughs> because you know beneficiary stuff and that type of thing and oh my goodness um that just cracked me up sometimes he comes up with the funniest little things so yeah he still has it for sure you know and then we started like changing the song like let's talk about death baby instead of the <laughs> the real words to the song oh my gosh then we got then we got the giggle, giggles over that you know so oh dear So that was, that was pretty funny. I love his sense of humor. He's got a dry sense of humor, so it's just sometimes stuff comes out of his mouth that I don't expect. And, um, yeah, he's funny. All right, so I'm going to finish up this last uh, flower here. And then um, I'll, I have some ideas about how to tone down this background. So I'll stop this in just a second and um, might even take a break. But for you, it'll be just a, a second flash here <laughs> while I kind of let this dry. And I'll bring you back and I'm going to add some here on this partial flower. But I'll bring you back here and I'll... I'll do that with you so hopefully um, it will work the way I want it to so actually let me put my paintbrush down and try to do this a little bit slowly so I'm not making you dizzy but this is where we're at so um, hopefully you can see the sheen in that on the bird and the flowers a little bit so um, we'll leave it at that and I'll see you in a minute Okay, I'm back and we're going to try to soften this background. Um, so I had a couple of different ideas. I had 
um, the idea of using a stencil and then putting in a, a lighter, you know, kind of sponging on a lighter color and going around the outside. I was just going to use like this part of it here and here. And I kind of talked that over with my sister and she suggested that maybe that was a little too much um, pattern and I think she's right. So what instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I had mixed up a lighter blue, a matte blue. I'm going to swap out my paper here, anticipating that I'll be a little messy. And um, so let me show you. So this, and um, I've got my little sponge, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of pat it in there and then try to kind of pat it off a little bit so it's not too clumpy and we're just going to kind of go around this a bit so let me move it over here and just see how it goes um <laughs> no guarantees here and I'm just kind of twisting my sponge a little bit so that It's, uh, it doesn't have like the same pattern over and over and over, if that makes sense. Um, you know, I like the look of that, I have to admit. And let's go here. Okay. Let me put something here so I... Don't make a mess of my neighboring page here. For now, I think I'm just going to go like this. Just, I should be taping it off, but I'm not going to. So we'll do that. And yeah, I think that works okay. I'm going to try to get in here a little bit just so that it's around the whole outside. You know? And um, I can wipe some of that off if I get some on the page, I feel like. And I, guess I might as well just go all the way down to the bottom here. Let me move this back into frame. And at first I was just going to do the edges and kind of leave the, the shiny bits on the inside, but... After kind of mulling it over, I decided that I it really needed some good toning down. So I am coming right up to the circle here. And um, I like it. And so what I did with my sponge is I barely, barely dampened it. And then even just with that tiny little bit of moisture, I rang it out in a, um, you know, my my little, you know, scrap <laughs> towel that I use for painting. And just to make sure that it was really dry, but I needed my sponge to be kind of pliable for this a little bit. And I'm just kind of squeezing it together here and there. And, um, you know, just to kind of get different looks. I really like this, and I like the, the color blue that I mixed up here as well. So what I did, um, looks like I used, the this is messy, the Apple Barrel Bright Blue um, Matte Acrylic, and then the Apple Barrel Snow White Apple Barrel. So those are old paints I've had forever, and I really need to use them up, so this is great. Yeah, this is really kind of cool. I like it. I'll move that over a little bit so I can get a little bit closer to the edge. See, how are we doing there on the edge? I could probably get a little bit closer, perhaps. Perhaps not. All right, and then here a little bit. I see a little bit of area there. Yep. I like it. It's almost kind of a lacy look, isn't it? You know what? I'm going to do this again. <laughs> I 
like this. I like the look of this. Like the look of this a lot. All right. Let's see. Let's kind of move back here a moment and see what we think. Um, I like it. I, you know what? I could take it down a little bit more, but I don't know that I'm going to. I, I'm really enjoying the um, effect, that, that little pattern. And I don't think I want to go any more with it. I could add like a little bit of white or a little bit of green or something, you know, but I I think I'm going to leave it, guys. I think so. Um, wow. <laughs> Thank you. I think just doing this on camera with you guys and, you know, I don't know, have, having the company <laughs> with me to and the courage to kind of plow through something that needed fixing. I think we did well, guys. So we'll leave it at that. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you on my next video. Bye, everyone.